What's up guys, Gums and welcome back to ProSign Mode 2022 for episode number 4 of the Servalo Career Mode. Uh, thank you for the support on the first uh, 3 episodes, I mean at least the first one because it's the only one that's been uploaded so far. Uh, but today we're going to carry on with the cobbles, uh, Dwarf de Vlanderen and the Ronde. Then we'll move to the Ardennes with Diamstel and Liège and then we'll see what we do. And on the way, for Dwarves, um, after a successful Gorbevel game, it is a plus 3 for Stefan Bessega. Um, I don't think I'm going to have the same results because it's a bit more difficult for Stefan compared to Gorbevel. But you never know, with some luck, and I guess luck has sometimes been on my side, could make it work. And we're going to do uh, Udo Kfarmont. Uh, I've done it in the Ronde for Vlanderen, uh, but for those who haven't watched that video or are quite new to uh, this PCM, the Healy stat now plays a big role in some sectors, such as Udo Kfarmont, such as the Bosberg, the Cowberg. So it is going to be int quite interesting to see uh, what happens. Amor Capio, uh, the runner-up of Gonvel Game, has attacked alongside Daniel Van Poppel, the runner-up of the Omloop. Okay, interesting to see. There's been a bit of an issue um, at the end of the last sector, and it really split the peloton in a lot of places. I'm pretty sure Emé de Rent and Sénéchal were caught in an incident, uh, and it led to Bessega be being three minutes down. So we still have Mauro Schmidt up front, but Bessega is not leading. Getting a few attacks here and there. Uh, we've got one rider on his own. Oh, that's not too vulnerable. Ah, I see. <laughs> There's 50 kilometers left, and he's already attacked. Cool. Uh, Bessega made it back in the first group thanks to a massive work by Hugo Hull. Got a lot of attacks here. Seneschal, Connor Swift, Don Hug, De Vul, Wisniewski, Jakobs. Uh, and then the Peloton, with uh, Wojt van Aert still there, not doing anything like the start of the season he's had. And there's been some attacks uh, just before, after the Paterberg. Uh, I forgot, is it Koppenberg? Kemmelberg? I don't know, it's any kind of berg. Uh, but yeah, there's been some attacks. Van Aert, Lampard, Stepstra, De Vrindt, Van Restel, Emé de Rent. And Mathieu is dead. See, if you didn't attack 53 billion times, you probably would make the first group, Mathieu. Well, the win today is for Wout van Aert. Uh, second place is going to be for Yves Lampard. And third will be a battle between Emé de Rennes, Tom de Vrindt, Louis Aske. <coughs> sorry, Louis Aske. And myself. All right. Take the lead in the downhill. Go 99 and sprint. And we should be good to go if I can hold on. Bessega, 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 uh, Bessega gets third in Dwarfs de Vlanderen. Successful campaign for Stefan. Gorvel game and a podium on Dwarfs. It's this time for the Ronde of Vlanderen. Uh, the second monument this year for us. After our fail at Milano San Remo, we have a lot more, um, I was going to say a lot more chances to win, that's a lie, I, I don't. But seeing how my, like, cobble campaign has gone today, I wouldn't be surprised if we were to take the dub home. Um, I mean, we've got Zhukovsky. Good stats for Nikola Zhukovsky. Mauro Schmidt, very solid. Heinrich Hausler, meh. Bessega, 76-80. Hugo Hull, 81-77. It's happening. Hugo Hull is winning the Ronde of London today. We crossed the first Udo Quamon of the day so far. So good. Four minutes for the breakaway of five as Jumbo Van crashes. A Canadian that may join us next year. I don't know. 60k to go. Things are starting to get interesting uh, because we've got the second Udo Kwamon coming up. All of my riders are going to get at the front of the peloton. Even though it seems that the trend on this game is less leaned towards the, uh, the attacking mana and the 99 pacing in um, huge climbs. So we'll see, there's a bunch of the Connor Swift right up the road, but yeah, like, again, no one making moves. Ah, oh, actually, maybe Van Der Poel going for it. Yep, yeah, Mathieu's going for it, yeah, though. Thank you, Mathieu. Zhukovsky really doing, like, the Lord's work right now to uh, try and prevent Mauro and Hugo from uh, spending any energy that could be used later on. A genuinely top-tier rider today. 32 years ago, we came back on um, Sheffield, Van Der Poel and Asgreen. Interesting to see the tactics of Van Der Poel in this game. Um, if you've made the previous episode, I would recommend watching it, but Mathieu just attacks out of nowhere and then he doesn't follow through. Like, he gets co up and then he dies. Which usually means that Van Aert is the one making the, the best moves. But there they go again, Van Aert and Van Der Poel. Final rule of Carmel. we just got dropped here by, uh, by some attacks. Uh, Bentana, Matimoric, most notably. Have I actually been drop dropped? Like, am, am I done? Oh, come on. Not like this. Not like this. I've been dropped, dropped like this. That's a bit sad. 
Van Barle Leeds, I have Mohorid, Van Art, Van Apple, Asgreen, Siege, Benoot, and then we've got a group Bessago, Go Hull, Cold Brelly, Sheffield. But sadly, we're going to be battling for the top 10 and nothing better. And Dylan Van Barle has dropped Rogue Van Art. It's going to be a Dutch win today for a van, but not the one that people expected. This one will fight for P3 alongside Kasper Asgren and Matej Mohoric. In the meantime, we have Hugo Hull alongside Stefan Bessega for uh, the last positions of the top 10. Hopefully, we can make it in. It's been the top 10 at the office for us today. P6 goes to Sonny Colbrani, 7th to Tish Benoit, 8th to Bessega, 9th to Tana, and 10th for Sheffield. It is me 8th and 12th today for us to, uh, to, in this round. I think with my stats, I could have done more, and I probably should have done more. I was on getting a better result today than uh, in the round of London. It's like, quite high because it's a plus 2 for Goul, it's a plus 4 for Joël Suter, it's a plus 5 for Adam De Vos. Overall, it's a good day. It's weird because I don't remember picking this many good riders, but I feel like they all have unbelievable fitness, meaning that, like, from July onwards, if I have more than 80 fitness with one rider, I, I don't know how it happened. We've entered the final 40 kilometers of the Amstel. There's a lot of attacks, a lot of riders trying to make moves. Uh, Remco Venepol being one of them. So it's Alexander Vlasov. Here goes Dorian Godon as well. Um, and here goes someone else. That's Juan Ayuso just pacing at the front. We've got Schmidt and Suter as my like protected riders. Vos and Ull are behind in case there's a need of a change. I think I'm in a good position. I just need to make sure that I don't get dropped on like a dumbass climb, but I feel like that happened just a lot less than the previous seasons. Or maybe that's just me. Final time on the, the Cowberg, we've got some attacks. Uh, leading, we've got Wojt van Aert, then we've got Alameda, Remco Venepol, then we've got the Peloton led by Adam de Vos. I feel like I was going for Joel Suter, but he just doesn't... I don't think he's going to cut it, if I'm being honest. Um, we'll see if we can catch Wout in the first place, uh, and then we'll think about our potential sprint. I like the fact that no one is relaying me, and when I say I like the fact, that's obviously sarcasm. Could anyone fucking help? I don't know. Like, anyone? I feel like I'm the only one with teammates except, like, Beno, but he's got one out ahead. Remco and Izen. Can you win the Amstel Gold Race after winning uh, Liege Bastion Liege? There's an attack on the right, uh, could be maybe Mohoric, Weppels, Dylan Tunes. Dylan Tunes is a much more logical answer. Uh, we're gonna come back, I believe, on Remco Venepol. And it's gonna be a sprint for Mauro Schmidt. In my wheel, Tunes, Bardet, Bernal, Woods, Cosnefroy. Remco is no more, or in soon. Like, 10 seconds off. Alright. Remco is officially no more. Mauro Schmidt. Came back at him. What do we do? What do we do? When do I launch? Okay, now. Mauro Schmidt versus Tunes versus Bardet. Tunes has the acceleration on me. Mauro Schmidt, can you come back? Yes, you fucking can! Mauro Schmidt wins the Amsel Gold Race! <laughs> Let's go! Alright, I need to address a few things. Remember how I said uh, no parouem? That, 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 that was obviously a lie, because... I invited myself to Parobé. However, at first I didn't want to do it, but I got convinced by some of my comments on the first episode. They were like, oh, how slow to, to Roubaix? So I did it, because I'm weak. However, um, this is going to go in the no normal episode that you're seeing. Like, for you, nothing happened. For me, three days have happened. Um, I'm currently recording episode six, so uh, I'm not going to just reset all the saves. So I've just taken an old weekly save. I'm going to write Paroubet. No matter what happens, I'm not carrying on with this version. I'll go back to my episode 6 version, all right? So if, I don't know, Hausler wins, which is, it could happen, uh, he won't appear in the Palmares as winner when I'll do the end of season recap. Everything okay with you? I, I, heard, uh, I heard a global yes, so I'll go with yes. To, to show also how late this is, I literally got a trim in between. Like, you're going to be so confused. Like, for people that just skipped ahead, they're going to be like, wait, I swear this guy had like a heck, like a cap, and a lot of hair in the Ronde of Vlanderen. Now he's got fuck all. Imagine their confusion when I'm going to have even more in the next video. Well, I mean, next race, and next video. Many crashes are happening. Um, Philippe Gilbert, Christophe Laporte, Tish Benoit, Gany Vermeersch. I've, had, uh, I've seen other names. Now Yusuf Mears has dropped. More crashes, Nizolo, Peter Sagan, Demar, De Vrindt. Uh, and at the moment, wait, so Sagan crashed 
on s'est surgit de Sarks tuer Tarak. Je pense que c'est pour Total Energy. Um, it's a bit different compared to like, the power I played uh, on my own that I put on the channel uh, a couple of days ago. Um, there's actually some rhythm in the couple of sectors. I didn't have that before. Surgis attacks again uh, with like uh, way past the Trodormer. He just got co op He was on his own since uh, since his attack. So I'm pretty much convinced that no rider from Total Energy will win today. Some more attacks. Moscon has green. Van der Poel. Wait, Moscon has 81 cobbles. Monsanto Pevel coming up. Solo rider up front. That's Alexander Christoph, uh, our former rider with uh, the Intermarché save. Girmaiser, Durant, Petit. Happy to see Intermarché doing well. Uh, some attacks up front. That's just Christoph Laporte accelerating with Wood Van Aert in the wheel. And I can't really afford to let this move go, if I'm honest, but I don't really want to follow it. I'm going to get dropped somewhere. I don't know how, I don't know when, I just know I'm going to get dropped. Van Bader goes again. Kung Van Aert. Van Mark, I'm going to guess. Yeah, he's the only good rider there is in uh, this ISN team. I, I, I cannot afford getting blocked by these guys there. Jan Tratnik is there? 75 call for Tratnik. Jesus, all right. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Well, that just ruined my day now, isn't it? I reset the save for that. Well, sadly, our hopes of winning power this year are gone. And it's going to be a battle of five riders as they enter the velodrome. Von Art, who was solo for about 20 25 kilometers. Von Epel, Von Marker, Von Barla, and Kung. We've got four vans against one Swiss rider. Uh, I mean, four vans can probably produce a lot of horsepower compared to Stefan Kung, even though we all know the strength. Of the Swiss rider who actually goes up. Could he try to go for a sprint? He's the worst sprinter out of the entire group, I presume. He's gonna go first. Von Der Poel is gonna smoke everyone on the acceleration, but Von Art is most likely gonna win the sprint. And yes, he is. No. Seb fucking Von Marker wins by way. Wow. Sadly, our crash has Anrich finishing in 28th position. Not his year. Not his race. Well, I guess we're on the way for Liège Bastogne Liège. Um. We just won the Amstel Gold race. Now Rochmet is about to, to make it a double. That's a lie. If I mean, if if I win this again, I said it with the Honda, and it didn't happen. I've said it with San Remo, it didn't happen. So I don't think it's going to happen today. I don't think we're winning a monument this year. And this is my last chance, because we've missed Paul and I'm not going to Lombardia. I think we, we, we will wait for next year to win a monument. We are reaching uh, the halfway mark now, as there's another crash. Um, I was about to just cover some of the crashes that happened. Because there's been quite a few. Warren Bargill, most notably, um, but also, I mean, Lenny Kemna right there. Also crashed, Pavel Sivakov, Mathieu Van Apple, and David Godu, who's had to retire from uh, Liège Bastogne Liège. Clearly showing that being a French leader at FDG does not give you any kind of advantage when it comes to your karma and your luck on the bike. This man needs to stop. Because Van Apple has attacked with, I think, um, Paris Pond Valentin Matthews, yeah? Yeah. Why? Why though? Why does he attack? I feel like Mathieu's AI needs to be fixed because he's just so attacking and that used to work on like the previous version of the game but this version where like you can't make as much effort as you used to he's just wasting a lot of opportunities. A uh, few crashes at the back and Andrea Vendrame says Arrivederci to Liège Baston Liège. It's quite a lot of attacks, and I mean, I'm using a lot of energy just trying to keep up with everyone, but it kind of like makes me think that there's a chance I could just have the most amount of energy in the sprint. So I just need Mauro to hold on in the, um, is it Rochefaucon? April, I mean, it's written up there, yeah. It is La Rochefaucon. If I hold on there, I can, I can do something in the sprint there. Like, I, I have quite a lot of energy. And we are in La Rochefaucon. There goes Tadej, I'm guessing, no, Formula, Roglic. Vlasov, Alain Philippe, Uran van Aert, Dan Martinez. Okay. Gotta increase my rhythm. I need to make the first sale, then the downhill portion I can maybe like take it a bit easy. Yuri pacing to try and catch uh, the three ahead. Formolo got co up as well. Who's this? Tadej. Shit. Now that Tadej goes, I can't. No, no one's gonna pace in it. Uh, yeah, well, uh, fighting for P6 it is then today, I guess. Maybe not. Maybe not. We may, we may be catching them. I don't know. It looks like there's a potential chance where we catch them. And we did. We did come back on them. Four kilometers left. We're going to be in the top 33 of this year's Dier Bastogne. Isn't that glorious?
Rana Yusen my wheel, Formolo Roglic. I have enough energy to launch the sprint. I would have preferred if I used had stayed in my wheel, if I'm honest. I was a lot more confident with a non-sprinter behind me. But we're going to try 1k to go, there goes my rush mate, I'm not holding on. I am not holding on until the end. And Tadej wins it. Tadej wins the final monument for us this year ahead of Roglic and Alaphilippe. We're going to not be in the top 10. We're going to be uh, probably 21st. Maybe not actually in the 17th. It's more of a... It's 20th actually, I wasn't far off. It's a bit disappointing to finish 21st or 20th. Um, I mean, had I waited a bit more, I probably would have been able to get top 15. Needed that slightly more energy. Like that plus 3 instead of plus 2, I had it. Alright. We've got the dossiers. Now, we're gonna stay true to our world and true to our background. So no worldwide nonsense. Cervelo means Canada, Switzerland, that's it. Nothing more, except Lithuania, because someone just told me I forgot about Gnatas Konovalovas. And I did. I thought he was Ramonas Navalovskas. Now first, if we take a look at the riders we need to resign, uh, Ugul is by far uh, one of the most important ones. Same for Mauro Schmidt. Same for Pierre-André Côté, and same, same sorry, for Joël Suter. Do they have everyone this year? Oh my god, they've added everyone in the dossiers. Oh, that's perfect. Um, Zukovsky's got 100, so I don't need to. Alex Vogel, he's 22. He's had a decent uh, Belgrade Banyaluska a couple of days ago. You didn't see it because I didn't bother showing it. Um, Alright, the rest are at 100, so we should be good. Is that... Uh, oh yeah, that's the test tube. Because I was like, I don't know any of these things. Out of the riders, that aren't with me that could uh, potentially join us. Uh, as a free, we've got Claudio Imhoff. Could be a shout. But mainly we, we can rob FDG because uh, they've got Matteo Batellati, they've got Fabien Linard, they've got Antoine Duchesne, they've got Sébastien Reichenbach. Sadly, there's no Stéphane Kung. There's a Guillaume Boivin here. I like the shout of Guillaume Boivin, if I'm honest. It, it's a, I, I don't mind it. Um, but I feel like he'd just be a very basic rider in my team. Reichenbach could be a shout. Like, genuinely... Oh, I've got, I've got 8 points. Wait, where? What do you mean? 8 out of 7? Okay, so I'm guessing I only have 8 points to spend. That'd be how I understand it. Well, I think we're going to go for Matteo Basilati. Uh, I think it's probably my best shout. Wait, oh, he's 33, that's a shame. Yeah, Basilati. Don't know what, it, what this means. Can I confirm? I can. Okay, I don't know what the Duxes are doing this year with these numbers there. By the way, in Germany for the Eschborn Frankfurt, yet another UCI race, uh, sorry, World Tour race. Doing quite a lot of these, actually. They're, they're starting to recognize the value of having Cervelo on, on the lineup. Um, although this time we're not winning, because I don't think Pesega has what it takes. And with all due respect to Alex Vogel, which I like, I don't think he's got what it takes either. Alright, my train is set, uh, although I may change it mm, yeah i'm gonna change i'm gonna change it bam is gonna take the will of the voice uh, okay um so my train is set now the odds of my train getting blocked in the foreseeable future are quite low uh, i'm saying like two to one for me getting blocked because that's very much likely gonna happen um but we're gonna try our best vocal as mass printer basic as a lead out just yes all i can ask is for the peloton to leave me to leave space and if they have all of the time to leave the space, maybe there's a top 10 that I can get. Well, they mean they left space, they did. Because they didn't even do any kind of trains. Like, disaster class for Francis Bourgeois. That's a TikTok reference. Uh, but Bessega has started this effort. There goes Hugo Vogel. I've launched way too early. It's not Hugo Vogel. Hugo Vogel is a left back for Lyon. It's a win for Svenrik Bistrom ahead of Alex Vogel. Can you hold on to Jordi Meus? Come on, come on, come on. Get your podium, son. Get in there! Alex Vogel gets second of Eshwan Frankfurt. Final race of the episode, and yes, it is a third outfit change. Uh, we are in Switzerland for the first time this year. For the Grand Prix des Cantons Aargau, um, or the Grosse Prix, sorry, des Cantons Aargau, um, which is fun if you pronounce it in a German way, but for like an English speaker to see the, like, the genuine German name of this. Everyone struggles, but that's fun. Uh, so thank you German-speaking countries for doing so. Mel Rochmitz is going to be our leader today, even though James Piccoli has a very, very good plus five. Um, the, the race days are getting weaker as, uh, as we go. Uh, also, question, I haven't asked it in the previous uh, episodes, but I figured I may need to do so, as Kristen is in the breakaway. Um, regarding the transfers, so I've said my aim is to focus on Canada. 
Switzerland as well. Um, do, do do we want other countries? Because I can't lie, the, the, the transfer window is going to be very, very boring this year. Because there's nothing. So I thought maybe adding US and neighboring countries like France. Also, so we don't have like a proper Swiss team just like Benji with Sudor. Uh, so while, while the thoughts on having uh, USA and maybe France or like Italy, I don't know. Also having like the US could potentially open up to like Garmin Cervelo in the future. Uh, so that, that that could be a thing, but it's it's up to you uh, whether you want it or not. Even though I said the focus is North Af is North America, Canada mainly. I'm trying to find that next rider edge out. It's a very interesting race so far. We've got a group of nine: Vian Christen, George Bennett. I mean, mainly Italian Pogacar and Pitcock. And then you've got me trying to to come back with James Pickle and Mauro Schmidt. Interesting. Seventy-seven health is somebody need. Jeez. Oh, and Christen just crashed. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why do I keep crashing in this game? What's happened? We're gonna pace for the final time in this hill, um, eight kilometers until we reach Gippingen, which is the end town. Uh, but it appears that Pogacar and Lutsenko are gonna fight for the win. They've got a minute on the group led by uh, Hameth Pikuli. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna try, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to come back. Pikuli is gonna be able to stop. Fred Fred Wright follows. Unreal. Sounds like Fred Wright. Jeez, okay. Did not expect that from him. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a win for either Lutsenko or Tadej Pogacar in a podium position for Mauro Schmidt. Uh, or at least, so I hope. It will not be a podium position. We, we, we've been lucky dropped. Um, Pogi is going to win. Then, oh wait, Bernal? Oh, it was Bernal, it wasn't Peters, it was again Bernal. Okay, uh, well Bernal takes second, Fred Wright takes third, Lutsenko fourth, and James uh, Mauro Schmidt really takes fifth. And with this top 5 in the Gros Surprise des Cantons Argao, uh, it is the end of the episode. Well, regarding um, the results in this episode, you've seen most of them. Um, I'm pretty sure we've taken off from the Vars of Landeren, which we got third. Uh, we've won the Amstel. We got second in the Classic uh, du Dou. We got third. Uh, sorry, no, we got second as well in um, Airborne Frankfurt. Then, I mean, we've got a few top 5s here and there, and Tour of Norway, we got third in the like youth classification. Belgrade Banja Luka, we got some places or whatever, no wins, quite a disappointing episode, but we did win the Amstel. And this episode, sadly, uh, sees us go down a few paces in the uh, continental ranking, or super prestige ranking, sorry. Uh, we are still the leading Conti Pro, but we've now dropped to P6 with 3,492 points. Next episode, Tour de Suisse and the National Championships. You better be there to see it. That'll be for the next episode, so if you want to make sure to see it, do feel free. To subscribe to your channel if you haven't done so already. Leave a like if you've enjoyed the video, leave a comment down below, I'll try and answer to most of them, and I'll see you very, very soon. My name is Guillaume, have an amazing day. See ya.